It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Denver Broncos and the Seattle Seahawks coming up next. With the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside Lumen Field here in Seattle, Washington. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Brandon Gaughton alongside Charles Davis. And before kickoff, Charles, quickly, your keys to the game. Well, partner, I can give you the standard ones, turnovers, special teams play. But here's one that doesn't get talked about much anymore, and that's time of possession. Whoever controls the football, gives their defense a break, and takes care of business, that's the team that's going to win this ball game. Takes this near the 25, just a little pass there. Call it the 26. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their quarterback at 6-2 out of Auburn. It's Jared Stidham. For a brief time, he was thought to be a possible successor to Tom Brady while he was still in New England, but that didn't materialize. But opportunity may still knock for him to start in the NFL today. Definitely has the arm and mobility to make plays against NFL defenses. All he needs now is consistency. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Someone's looking fresh, and his old line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block. If you're an offensive lineman, nice early burst, nice gain, too. From the 34 yard line, here's second and a couple. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That burst good for 20 and a first down. That's a very nice game there, a confidence building run. Love the execution up front and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 41. Now Stidham. This one complete to Jerry Judy. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that'll bring up second down. Second and five on the Seahawks 36 yard line. Now we give up the middle to Williams. Taking it right down Broadway. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 51 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things. And it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. And a good game here of nine from the 19 down to the 10. It's a game of nine. Brings up second and a yard at the 10-yard line. 
Ball resting on the 10 yard line. It's second and one. Here's Stidham to throw. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And the Broncos are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. I like it. I like it. I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it and really gets them amped up as they go forward. Williams will take it in. Touchdown, Denver. It's not often you talk about statement drives coming right at the start of the game, but that was some statement there. That drive took them the length of the field, and as I look at the clock, ate up nearly the entire first quarter as well. Great work up front, clearing space, and an ideal finish on the touchdown run. Will Lutz on for the point after. And he's got it, seven nothing Broncos. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Well, now how about this return? A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Here come the Seahawks and their offense now under veteran head coach Pete Carroll. And they're led out by their mobile quarterback out of West Virginia. It's Geno Smith. I still remember back in 2013 when he was drafted out of West Virginia. He was coming off of back-to-back 4,000-yard seasons for the Mountaineers. Hadn't seen as much game time in recent years, but at one point, a capable starter in the NFL. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. After 1-7-0 on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Seattle, and it is the Seahawks with the football here. A yard all they need, but it's third down. They'll try for the first with Walker. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Just to pick up a three, but that is indeed enough. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it here. Why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. Out quickly here to Smith and Jigba. Here's a second and eight. Now Smith. This is Fant on the short completion. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Dallas up the middle, and he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. From the 41, here's a second and eight. Play action, it's Smith. And he's got Smith and Jigba. 
And he will be out of bounds. A good yardage there, and he'll get a second to catch his breath as it leads us right into the two-minute warning. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Now Gino. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one. Close quickly. It helped force the incompletion. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Throwing now is Geno. He completes this to Walker. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. To the air again, Smith. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The third down conversion is successful. Give him 12 yards that time. A very important third down conversion right there because when you're trailing and find yourself this deep in enemy territory, the kicker's not even part of your thought process. You got to make it pay off with six. Nice connection right there to set up first and goal. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Now Smith. End zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Will Disley there to make the grab. And the Seahawks are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. After nearly 30 minutes of football, that touchdown puts us in a position where if they make the extra point, we're right back to even before we start the second half. Jason Myers now for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. the kicks away. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. It's a foot race. And they are not going to catch him. He's in. Touchdown, Broncos. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge him, kick it to him. The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam and he got a full head of steam there. Lutz with the extra point, and that makes the score 14 to 7. And what a job there by all 11 on the kick return. The blocking excellent, the return excellent. The result, six points. So let's try this again after the kick return TD. Here's yet another kickoff. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. 
And the Seahawks offense going to get one final possession in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. So many times we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Second and 10, Smith again. This is Fant on the short completion. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Two yards still to go. Third down now. A shotgun snap for Smith. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. Now with five seconds left, not really enough time to run another play and then stop it. So on comes the field goal unit. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt. And he put enough leg into it, but it's well off to the right and no good. And this will stay at a seven-point game. Wow, partner, it's almost a little jarring to see a holder set up on the other side of midfield. I haven't brought out my binoculars to make sure on that one. That is showing an awful lot of confidence in a kicker to try and hit from 61 yards, and this one winds up no good. He's going to throw one up for the end zone. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. So we come upon halftime with the visiting Broncos taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports Halftime Report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Coach. It was four yeah, tar heels to Monte Williams. Williams. Yeah. 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 Touchdown ball game, 14-7. Our scores, as we get back at it on EA Sports. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing equals passing the ball more, but I'd establish the running game. They kind of went away from it in the first half. I think if they get back in balance, it'll help them when they put the ball back in the air. Alex Singleton, a former Canadian League star, in on the stop. Second and six, just inside the 30. Now it's Smith. Puts it on the carpet, it's out. It's picked up by the Broncos. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. 
And their defense just helped him out by getting the football back on the opening drive here in the second half. And now can the offense follow through with points on their first possession? And that's a big one for them because after the work the defense has done, they've got a chance here to open up this lead. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Here's second and seven. Play action. It's Stidham. The throw out wide going to be incomplete. No receivers open, so who's forced to put that one into Puget Sound? That's a great job defensively blanketing those receivers. And ultimately, a smart idea by him just to get the ball out of there. Well, they need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. Stidham. And they get him down about two yards shy of the line to gain. A third down pickup of five. That looked great when he first took off because in my mind, there was room to run and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly and neither did he. They got to him just in time and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. Now lots for the field goal try. This will be spotted at the 37, so it's a 47-yard attempt. The kick by Lutz is good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17 to 7. So the fumble recovery had them set up in ideal field position, but they can muster only three points out of it. Yeah, when you're able to force turnovers, especially when it results in field position like they had, you really want to make it hurt. Here, they take the field goal. That's definitely not what they were hoping for. Field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Seahawks again now ready to take over on offense. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though? when they only gave up the field yeah. goal, and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive, a little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think Coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. And we sit in quarter number three out in Seattle, a second and ten now. Gino to out of throw. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. I'm getting the sense that this offense is getting frustrated. Here we are into the third quarter, and they've had plenty of opportunities to get in sync. Thus far, that hasn't happened. They're looking for answers both on the sidelines and in the huddle looking at each other. Throwing on third down, Smith. And this pass broken up. Now the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. Good clean play. No flags coming out of the pocket of the officials. Turns into an incompletion, and that should get him off the field with a three and out. Now here's Michael Dixon, and surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. Denver's offense now set to go. 
And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead. And oh, he sheds a tackle. Now he's got some space. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. 25 yards there on the catch and run. A great job there. And that old cliche, taking what the defense gives you, comes right into play. Nothing too out of the ordinary about the throw. Just a little dump off over the middle. But what is out of the ordinary is what he did with it after the catch. Not only did he grab the ball, but how about the significant yardage he picked up after he pulled it in? On first down, Stidham. That's caught inside the 20. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 34 yards the game that time. Another first down. Another big play right there. And this is where, as an offense, you can really put the hammer down. You've got a double-digit lead, but those other guys, they've been hanging around. A touchdown here could put this game out of reach. And that's a strong step towards getting it done. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Here's Stidham. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. I like what they tried to do there. They didn't get a completed pass downfield, but they came up with a momentum play. Big time gain on the previous snap. Came right back and threw one deep, hoping to catch them on their heels. Second and 10. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You first see incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Well, this red zone is where the Seahawk crowd really makes it tough for an offense to communicate. It's third down. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. Well, the screen gets 7, but it's not enough, and it'll be fourth down. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage. It should be an impactful play, because if you can get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves, that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. They run. It's Williams. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short, and he didn't get there. Now Gino on first down. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. They'll fake it. Now Smith. Finding Smith and Jigba downfield. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. So that play much needed there as they're all the way up near the 40 for a first and 10. Smith. Going right back to Smith and Jigba. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. This duo locked in 14 yards there and a first down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Smith. And that is incomplete. Give it big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. They'll look to throw again. 
That's complete to DK Metcalf. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole <laughs> cool. lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Let's see who's faster. Smith on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he's going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They've been moving the ball well, but this drive was in danger of stalling out. Fortunately, this is a nice throw here, and they're able to pick up a new set of downs. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Smith throwing again. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Here's second and ten. To throw is Smith. And this is a quick slant to lock it. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. A big play here, third and two. Here's Smith. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They've got it first and goal as they look to punch in a late score. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. And they put it in the end zone, which was job one. Now they have to convert. And then it's decision time, isn't it? Yeah, so this is what all teams go through. You look at the clock, you're inside two minutes, look at your timeouts, make that onside kick decision. Yeah, how do you feel about your defense, where you are in terms of the scoreboard, and the time left on the clock, as you noted, so many things to go through. They get one more as the extra points up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Taken in right around the goal line. And able to break this out all the way to the 38-yard line. Great return. And Denver getting set to take the field. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see them take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here is third and five. Stidham to throw it. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down.
And they will take a knee here. Second and 11 at the 41. They'll run out of the gun here. Williams. And uh, he'll take this one down to about the 40. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe to get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. And how about in the NFL? The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. So this one will wind up a Denver victory. And say what you want about Lumen Field here in Seattle, but for my money, this is the loudest and most difficult place to win in the league when you're on the road. It's very hard. The fan support, off the charts. The way that they make noise and understand when to make noise, they understand the game as well as anyone. And how about what we get in our, our media packets when we start preparing for the game? They have it in their own stuff, right? The number of offsides, penalties, false start penalties that they draw against the opposing team because of that fan support. And last but not least, they designed the stadium to keep the noise in, and it works. But not in this one. They were able to somehow come in here and get that victory. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Seattle, so long, everybody.